um, I'm Hui Juan, a quality engineer at the Red Hat. Uh, in this session, I'd like to share with you good practice to balance test matrices. In the next few minutes, I will cover why to balance test matrices. Then I will show how to achieve it via the good practice of cloud unit testing. At last, I will introduce an automation framework, which is helpful to achieve it. So first, let's understand why to balance test matrices. I think most QA maybe have met such a challenge. We need to test a new feature, package, kernel, or OS on multiple platforms or architectures. And these platforms always have different requirements. It means there is a big test matrix, and there is always requirements for QA. We need to uh, ensure the comprehensive coverage, ensuring test efficiency and effectiveness. And, mm, but we always have limited resources for testing. So how should we handle such a challenge? My answer is balancing test matrices. So what is balancing test matrices? Actually, it is a practice in software testing that involves creating a structured and optimized approach to test coverage. The goal is to maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of testing in the resources available. And there are many benefits to do this. Mm, it can help to ensure the com uh, comprehensive test coverage, uh, efficient resource utilization, improve the quality, risk mitigation, uh, and enhance the customer satisfaction. So until now, I think you already understood um, the essentiality to balance test matrices. Um, but how could we achieve it? So next, uh, let's explore the ways to achieve it via an example, the good practice of cloud unit testing. First, uh, let's see what is cloud unit. In short, it is a cloud instance initialization tool. It can customize a uh, cloud instance at the first boot. For example, it can help to set the instance host name, SSH access key, network and storage device, and so on. And it is supported on all the, supp all the major public and private clouds, and also supports bare metal installations. This, diagra uh, this diagram shows how it works. A cloud instance is initialized with an image and instance data. The image always has cloud init pre-installed, and instant data always includes the metadata, user data, and the vendor data. They are organized as a data source. Every platform has its own data source. So users just need to put the configuration data to the data source. Then cloud init could customize the instance with the data in the data source. So according to the descriptions, we can see there are some specific challenges in the testing. And the first challenge is we need to cover many platforms, including the public clouds, private clouds, and hypervisors. For example, uh, we run tests on Microsoft Azure, and uh, Amazon AWS, and VMware ESXi, and Real KVM, and so on. And the second one is the usage is and various and flexible. As mentioned above, uh, users can configure it with metadata, user data, and vendor data. And there are many built-in uh, modules which can support different configurations. And it also supports the customized scripts. The last one is the base requirements. Um, the upstream uh, releases are very frequent and the customers usually request the latest the new features in upstream. So we need to do, to do the rebase regularly and then need to guarantee the compatibility with the previous versions. So um, how do we handle the challenges and uh, achieve the testing goal? 
Here are some main strategies in the testing. Uh, the first one is identify test platforms. We run different test strategies on different platforms. For example, uh, we run full test on Azure, but only run verification test on real KVM. And we separate our cases into general cases and uh, platform specific cases. And 8% are general cases, which can be reused on old supported platforms. It means we can reuse them, uh, which can reduce the duplication work. The second one is um, prioritize test areas. Uh, we separate our tests into several tiers. Mm, for example, tier one includes the most basic and crucial functions. Tier two includes the risky functions. And tier three includes the corner functions. This can help us to focus on crucial and risky functions. The third one is upstream test first. We do research and test in every base and adjust our test cases accordingly. And at the same time, we will notify customers timely for the new changes to avoid any confusion. Uh, upstream test first can help us to detect bugs as early as possible and make us have a good collaboration with upstream. And this can help us to fix bugs very quickly. The next one is utilize automation and CI. As we know, automation is very important in the software testing. And choosing a um, suitable automation framework is very crucial. And so according to the cloud init requirements and challenges, uh, we choose a lightweight automation framework named OS Tests. And I will introduce it uh, in detail in the next part. So let's move on to the next point, uh, collaborate across teams. Mm, we have good collaboration with other team QA, developers, Q, uh, PM, PO, and other stakeholders. This can help us to uh, cover the cross test easily and ensure alignment on testing priorities, share insights, and coordinate efforts. The last one is um, iterate and improve. Um, we do regular review and update for our tests. By, by implementing these strategies, um, Cloud Init delivers a higher quality software, and the customer bugs were reduced year by year. Then um, we could have more time to set up our automation and CI, which could improve the test efficiency. So um, a good positive cycle is formed. OK. Um, and uh, now let's uh, take a look at automation from work or tests. It is a lightweight, portable, and customer-focused test collection for Linux OS. The test scope includes KDAMP, Lifecycle, Network, Cloud Init, and so on. And it supports three working modes. The first mode is, it can, oh, sorry. <laughs> the first mode is it can run on local host. And the second mode is uh, it can run um, on a remote instance. The third mode is it can support the deploy instance by itself and log in it for the test. And here is the whole workflow of a test. We can use CI to trigger it, uh, and it can generate uh, two types of logs. And here are the three working modes mentioned above. Mm. Except automation run, it also supports uh, case doc syncing. It can sync our automation cases in a test to the document in our case management system. So how it helps in maximizing test metrics completion? Um, the first one is it can help us to reuse test cases on multiple platforms. It means if we would like to initiate a new platform, uh, uh, a new platform testing, we just need to end the platform 
a uh, specific oh sorry <laughs> specific SDK. Then we can reuse all the existing general cases. So this can help us to avoid the repetitive case case writing effort and initiate a new platform testing quickly. The second one is um, monitor and analyze results. There is a built-in runtime log analyzer. Um, which can help us to debug the failed cases automatically. Uh, the last one is uh, sync standardized uh, case doc. It can export and import YAML doc to our test case management system, which facilitates the improvement for test matrices. So um, this is our test. Um, at last, uh, let's recap. Uh, we have discussed uh, the importance um, of um, balancing test uh, matrices, then um, showed the multiple ways um, to achieve it via the good practice of cloud testing. At last, uh, introduced a uh, helpful automation framework. I hope um, this practice could be a reference for your testing process. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Um, any questions? Okay, if no, thanks for the attending. Thanks again. <laughs>